18th of September, 2018. A man was supposed to be at his parents' house to celebrate his sister's birthday, but he wasn't there. Two days went by, and there wasn't any clue of where he was. His parents have had enough. They contact the police to help them find their son, but little did they know that the police had already found him. On the morning of the 19th of September, the police found a dead body in the middle of nowhere. The guy was later identified as James Paulson, a computer scientist. But the question was, how did James end up here? The police got to the bottom of this, and I will tell you the exact story. On the night James Paulson was supposed to be celebrating his sister's birthday, he had, however, revealed to her sister that he was going to stop by to meet this girl he had been talking to on Tinder. He had told her that her name was Julie, and she was very beautiful, and he might even be late for the birthday celebrations. The police had gotten their first suspect. Things got even more crazier when two more men came forward and said that they had been robbed by their Tinder dates. The first guy, whose name is Daniel, said that his Tinder date, Bella, robbed him. When asked exactly what happened, Daniel started to explain the whole incident. He said that he had been texting this girl on Tinder and they decided to meet. She was standing near an old grey Mercedes car. She got inside my car and she seemed very kind. She said that before we went to the restaurant I had a reservation for, she needed to get her jacket from her grandmother's house. I agreed with her and told her we would do exactly that. She started to show me the way to her grandmother's house. The road was very bumpy and there was hardly any light visible there. We finally got to the house and by the way it looked, I thought the house was abandoned. She insisted that I come with her inside this house and I was dumb enough to do so. Just when I got in, I realized that no grandmother was living there. The house was dark. When the light was on, Suddenly, two men came from behind and started to attack me. They threw me to the ground and beat me with a baseball bat. They then tied bridles around my wrists and feet and gagged me with duct tape. A man started electrocuting me with an electric gun, peeled his knife to my neck, shouted at me and said, You know what will happen to you if you don't cooperate? I was scared to my core and I thought that I was going to die. I quickly gave them my card and my pin. They left me tied up in a cane field. I managed to somehow escape and seek help by knocking on a nearby farmhouse door where I was attended by a mother and son who helped me with everything. After hearing his story, the police called in the other guy who also claimed that he had been robbed. The guy was named Ted, he was 59 years old and recently divorced, so that made him a perfect victim. Ted started to tell his story. I was recently divorced, so to get over that, I turned to Tinder. I matched with this girl called Rachel. We started texting and she said that she liked mature men and was very keen on meeting. She told me how short her dress was going to be the day we met. I got very excited and was ready to meet her. She sent me her location and I went there by train since I didn't know how to drive. When I got off the train, I saw her on the other side of the rails. She was flashing her mobile phone at me so that I could locate her. When I approached her, she started kissing my neck, hugging me and warning me about the great time that I was going to have that weekend. I got into her car, an old grey Mercedes, and she started driving off to the countryside. We were supposed to be alone. However, while driving on a dirt road, I was hit from behind on the head with a big wrench. Her crime partner, a tall and strong man, was hiding in the back seat waiting for the perfect moment to attack me. I managed to run away while she was shouting from the car, kill that son of a bitch who's getting away. Criminals got me and the woman mounted a gun and pointed it straight at my head. I thought I was going to die, but I was tied up and gagged and thrown into the boot of the car. 
They even broke one of my legs while tying me. I was struggling to breathe during the car ride as my mouth was covered with hard tape and my head with a black cloth bag. When arrived at their destination, they stole everything that I had on me. 700 euros and some of my other belongings. They wanted my family to pay 12,000 euros for the ransom, otherwise they would cut off my finger. I didn't want my family to be harmed, so I told them, do whatever you want to me, but I will not give you any of my family details. You can kill me. They shouted back and told me that they would throw me in the river. However, they both gave up and left me badly wounded in the middle of a field. I managed to escape with a broken leg and started crawling on the ground until I saw the road. A tractor passed and the driver stopped to ask me if I was okay. I was taken to the hospital and now I am here. The police forces started to connect the dots. On the 18th of September, a man went on a Tinder date and was killed. On the 19th and the 20th of September, the same thing happened, but only this time, the two men survived. One thing was clear, all three incidents were done by the same party. Now the question was, how to find this party? The policemen kept looking at the testimony of Daniel and Ted. They found something common in both testimonies. Yes, the old grey Mercedes. The policemen shouted, no way they already owned that car. This car must have been bought recently, said the policeman. Now they started looking all over for the old grey Mercedes that had been bought in recent days. They found several and then requested Daniel and Ted to come in again and identify the car. They both indicated towards the same car. The police started looking into it and the car was bought on an online website. The police traced the seller of the car and he started telling them about a man who had bought it from him. He paid 11,000 euros for the car and promised that the remaining payment would be done in the next few days. When the police told him about the incident, the seller told him that he knew of no such thing, but the buyer of the car left the identity card there for the seller to assure him that he would return to make the rest of the payment. The name of the man was Akhraf Ali. The police started investigating this man. During the investigation, a sergeant came forward claiming that he recognized him. It's Akraf Ali, he said. He further said that the man had two restraining orders against two women who lived in the town, and for the last six months, he had been in a relationship with a third woman. The sergeant also revealed the location of the suspect to his colleagues. On the 2nd of October, Akraf Ali, Jose Delgado, and Arietta were arrested on several charges, including the death of James Paulson. In the searches, the agents found evidence of the three savage attacks. Moreover, the woman Arietta was also identified by Daniel and Ted. She was neither Julie, Bella, nor Rachel, but Arietta, a woman who pretended to be someone she was not to rob and kill people. 